In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this red dot mount for a Marlin lever action hunting rifle using my Tormach PCNC 440 3 axis CNC mill. Hopefully, this video will give you an idea of what it's like working with these machines and what they're capable of. So, let's get started. So, I start off by making a 3D model of the part and then programming all of the tool paths, which I do in Fusion 360. I'm not going to get into too much detail at this point in the video, but the basic machining strategy will be to mill the first half of the part, flip it over, and then mill the underside, finishing it up. I like to use adaptive tool paths to remove most of the material, clean it up with some contours, and then, of course, some facing passes to finish off any flat surfaces. Before we go any further, I'll talk a bit about the machine itself. So I have a pretty modestly specced 440. The total price was about $10,500 as I got things like the enclosure, but decided to pass on the automatic tool changer and power drawbar. We've got four tools for the first operation. The first is this simple high-speed steel 1 8 inch drill. This thing's pretty old and worn, but it'll do the trick. Next up, we have a quarter inch three flute ZRN coated end mill. This is a square end mill. It'll do all of our roughing and finishing. We have a couple weird diameter holes, so I'm gonna use this square 1 8 inch end mill to open those up. Finally, we have a quarter inch 90 degree chamfer end mill, which we're gonna to use to chamfer some of the edges. And I'm also gonna use it to drill my countersinks, which is a little unorthodox, but it actually works out. For fixed string, all we're going to need to use is a couple of parallels to hold the bar stock on the first operation. In the second operation, we actually won't even need these. So to start off, I always make sure that my vice jaws are clean and free of any chips so that when we put the parallels down, they're sitting flat to make sure that the workpiece itself isn't skewed in any way. I'm using a piece of 6061 T6 aluminum for this project. It's a pretty gummy material, but I found that it works well and holds tolerance decently, so it'll do the job in this application. Go ahead and tap it down with the mount a little bit, make sure that the parallels are seated properly. For locating, I like to use the Tormach Touch Probe. It's a bit tricky to dial in, but this thing's really useful and I use it on all of my projects. We'll go ahead and load this into the machine, and then we'll use it to locate the corner of the workpiece, which I'm using as the zero in my program. So first up, we have that eighth inch high speed steel drill, which is gonna be doing some of our pilot holes. Load that in there and get started. Now that that's complete, I'm gonna show you the process of changing tools with the manual draw bar. It's actually not as bad as you'd expect. First, we lock the spindle so that we can't rotate it. As you can see, it's unable to spin once that lever is engaged. Next, we'll go ahead, take a wrench and loosen up the drawbar. With the drawbar loose, we'll take a hammer and a light tap and that'll let the tool drop out. Next, we're loading up the quarter inch square end mill. So we'll just hold that in the spindle and go ahead and tighten up that drawbar. Once the drawbar is tight, we don't even need to disengage the lever. As we close the door, it'll automatically disengage, so you don't have to worry about remembering to close that up every time you change tools. So the machine automatically stopped at the tool change. Now that we have the new tool in, we can go ahead and resume the cycle, and we'll begin the roughing and finishing of the top half. This tool will cut the outer profile of the part, as well as create four pegs, which will actually insert into holes on the red dot itself to help lock it in place. You can see how I use an adaptive toolpath to clear out most of the material, and then I use a contour just taking off a few thousands to get each of those pegs to the exact right diameter. Tool 2 is done, so I'm going to go ahead and load up tool 3, which is our 1 8 inch square end mill. I actually only have one 1 8 inch collet, so I'm going to pull the drill out, stop the program, retouch off this one, and then move on. I put together this clip to show you how long it takes to do a tool change with the manual drawbar, and it's a pretty quick process once you have a system down. So 
So as you can see, it's just 25 seconds from beginning to end for a tool change. Once I finished touching off the eighth inch square end mill, I could go ahead and resume the program. There's a lot of unnecessary Z movements in this toolpath, but this is a one-off part, so I didn't spend a lot of time dialing in each toolpath to be as efficient as possible. The final tool for the first operation is our chamfer end mill. This is a 90 degree chamfer cutter, and I'm gonna use this to chamfer some of the edges and actually drill the countersink for two of those large holes in the center. The first operation is now complete. As you can see, the top half of our part is done. The surface finish isn't perfect. Part of that is due to using worn tools. The other part is due to the tool paths not being dialed in. But as I mentioned earlier, this is a one-off part, so I didn't put a ton of time in optimizing it. Of course, I wanted to test fit and make sure the red dot seated properly on the top. For the second operation, we're gonna flip it over and clamp on these four bosses that you see. I'm going to make sure not to squeeze it too tight because we don't want to crush them and distort them. I'm going to load up the Tormach touch probe and use the excess material to zero off of. We're only going to need one tool for the second operation and that's our quarter inch three flute square end mill. We'll load that up and get started. So this tool starts out by cutting a channel down the center of the part, and then it cuts two angled surfaces that rest against the receiver. The angles weren't standard, so rather than making or buying a custom chamfer cutter, I actually used the square end mill to make 1,000th steps with the correct step over to replicate the angle. So the surface finish isn't perfectly smooth, but it's small enough steps that you don't actually notice on the finished product. That's the end of the second operation, so the part's now finished gonna go ahead and take it out of the vise and we'll measure it and make sure that the actual part lines up with our model's dimensions. After measuring all the major features, I found that the maximum deviation was just three thousandths of an inch. Considering my speeds and feeds haven't been dialed in perfectly, I'm pretty happy with these results. With the part finished, the only thing left to do is to mount it up and see how it looked. At the time of filming this, I didn't have the correct size tap on hand, but the whole alignment seemed perfect, so I don't expect any surprises once this is finished up. And there you have it. That's the entire project from beginning to end. There were no major gaps, and I'm really happy with the fit and finish of the final product. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of what it's like working with the Tormach PCNC440 and what these machines are capable of. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to help. 
I think these are great machines and I recommend them to everybody with limited shop space or someone who's doing prototyping or low volume production. I have some really cool projects lined up, so definitely stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.